am Kathy Greenbank, and I'm principal oboe in the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra. So I'm going to uh, work on uh, talk about tombo, which is a, a very frequent um, excerpt in auditions. It, I think it is so because it's more of an oboe concerto. Each movement has a uh, big oboe solo in it, and um, they're very, I think, very tricky. There's uh, some technique in the beginning, uh, very awkward, a little awkward technique, and then the second movement, there's articulation. Uh, in the third movement, you have a beautiful singing line, and then the last movement, you have an opportunity to um, kind of express yourself in a way that um, can be very unique to you. Some of the things that when I know I'm going to play tombo, I start working on ahead of time. And this is something that uh, John Mack taught me, and I've, I've done it every time, and I swear it works like a charm. And uh, the, the most important thing about tombo is keeping the flow of the line throughout some of the awkward jumps. And uh, the preparation for that, um, he taught me, and, and I will show, share with you, is... So you get that kind of consistent, round, uh, flowing, even motion over the leaps. The that one's not as hard as later that comes. That one's a little bit trickier. Um, but over that leap, you, you learn to connect and make the continuous sound of, of trying to get it as even as possible. Um, the, other, the other problem that comes with this is after, after the opening, this spot in there, you tend to rush. I don't know. I don't know. Everyone rushes that, and it's very awkward in the fingers. It's a lot of over the break, and to get that extremely even and and clean uh, takes a little bit of practice. Again, I would break them up into smaller groups, and think of the groupings in this way. So you're always going over the grouping into the next section. Again, it's a grounding thing. You also want to think about the... That will also keep you grounded as you, as you go the scale progression up to the top. So... So you get that progression up and you get the crescendo without, without rushing. As you, you need to be grounded when you play this excerpt. The other thing I want to talk about is I have never in my entire career yet had to play this excerpt at the tempo written. Um, it's always much slower than I think. Even when I know it's going to be slower, I still practice it too fast. So when I get into the actual situation, it's very it's, it's a nice flowing tempo. Um, most, most conductors will not take it at the tempo. It, it, many, many people, it, the string players especially, can't play it that fast. So when you are preparing it for an audition, keep in mind that, yes, it's a flashy, you can flash and show your technique, but it's also extremely musical. So what I try to do in any audition is show the musicality. Um, the technique will show itself so you can make it convincing. Um, that's the most important part of your audition is to make it yours, and you have to convince the people that are listening that this is the right way to play it because it just makes sense. Um, the other thing I want to say is that when you're auditioning, you will be playing for not oboists only. You have violinists, you have clarinetists, you have so many people, and so many audition committees that I've been on. I think the person's fantastic, and the other and the person next to me thinks I've never heard anything worse in their life. So you have to take that into consideration too. You will not please everyone, so you just go with your strongest conviction and give them that. That's a, that's all you can control. You can't control what they're going to think. So really give it your all, be convincing, and be you, because nobody, everybody out there is going to have a different opinion. So the next excerpt I'd like to do from Tombo is the minuet. Um, this is a beautiful chance to show your expression and long line. It's a very simple song, and in my opinion, and, and the, simp the, the more simple things are, the more complicated they get. So um, you try to make something sound beautiful yet simple. Um, is, is the key to this excerpt. It's the third movement. Um, I'm going to play it through. Um, I'll take the repeat, but okay, I'm going to play the third movement of tombo.
So what I'd like to talk about this one is trying to keep the line and also to use the um, orchestration to help you make your, make your phrasing. The first section of that is with winds, playing very much boom, boom, boom. And the, their articulation behind you allows you to propel forward, but also gives you a chance to sort of um, you know, play a little bit differently than the second half when the strings come in. It's very lush and very soft. So to make the contrast between those two sections is, is really good to do. And just kind of show maybe on the inside that you are trying to do that even though that's not there. You have to imagine that it's there. Um, so the uh, first thing is, are the grace notes are usually on the beat. So um, the very first grace notes are not but and that's much easier to do when you have your colleagues behind you playing on the beat. They, you just play with them on the beat. So um, you have to again imagine that but it up is the and then they have boom, boom, boom in the first bar, so you just go along with them. And that's the first phrase of that. Um, again, you can use the propulsion of the, t the tonguing of your colleagues to give you that simple line forward. Then in the, the second part, um, oh, also at the very end of the first part, uh, these. A lot of times people don't quite know what to do with those or you'll be asked to do very different things with that marking articulation. So what I like to do is space them but still give them a line. Um, there's a boom, 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 that kind of feeling that, that it's still moving forward. Some people boom, boom, they'll do it this way or they'll do a boom, 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 whatever. But it's, it needs a little bit of placement on each one, but maintaining the line. Um, and then the second half, when the strings come in, if you can kind of try and change your color, or it does help when the strings are there to give you a different color from the winds. But if you can sort of soften and make everything much, if you have the beginning being Then you have when the strings come in, you just make everything much more legato and a much longer phrase. Soften the sound because you don't need to play quite as loud as you will with the winds. And the, this also, this I was teaching this the other day, and but these notes. What they do, they're two notes grouped together. Uh, there's what's an accent on the first one, and then and then away, and then. But that that those particular two notes are just kind of isolated by themselves. They don't. They're not pickups to the next bar. It's not that, and they're not really belonging to the, what comes before it. Not really that either. So those two nights kind of just kind of isolate themselves. There's just a little parentheses in, in the middle of the phrase. And then then the, then the tail end of that. Play it in tune. I think the best thing about that, some people take time at the high notes and some people don't. I think it just, if you make a beautiful diminuendo, the timing will take care of itself and then the next measure is back in tempo.